Are you feeling any better yet? Yes, a little. So, which one of these soups do you want me to get you? I think mm. this one by Knorr sounds pretty good. I don't see that. Oh, you mean Knorr? Yeah, the green one right here. Yeah, that works. Also, uh, do you have a hair dryer that I could use? Because I'm about to take a shower. Of course. You can just use the brown one that's in the bathroom. Um, and hey, do you want me to bring you any aspirin? Brawn. Okay. And uh, bring me what? Aspirin? The painkiller? Oh, that's how you guys say aspirin? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. A while back, I made a video about 15 German brands that most Americans pronounce incorrectly, or let's say at least not the way that they're actually pronounced in German. And when I first came to the US, it was really weird for me to hear some of these German brand names pronounced so differently that I sometimes didn't even understand what people were saying. Kind of like this. Hey, what's up? I just bought some new Adidas shoes. What shoes? Adidas? The brand? Never heard of it. I got them right here. What do you think? Oh, Adidas. Okay. Um, yeah, they're pretty dope. I got some amazing feedback from you guys for that video and it was also fun to see that a lot of people didn't even know before that brands like Adidas, Puma, Nivea or even Aldi were German. If you haven't seen the video yet, you can find the link in the info box below or just click up here on the little i. But I couldn't fit all the brands that are worth mentioning into one single video and that's why today I have 10 more German brands for you that you probably pronounce wrong and I also include included the brands that you guys suggested and asked me about in the comments. The first German brand name that English native speakers pronounce differently than we do in Germany is the language app Babbel, which is the sponsor of today's video, so a big shout out to them. In English speaking countries, they go by Babbel, like I just said it, whereas in Germany, we actually say Babbel. Now the German verb Babbeln is more of a regional word that is mainly known to be part of the Hessian dialect, but some other regions use this word too, and it means to chatter or to babble. So yes, the English word Babbel actually means the exact same thing as Babbeln in German, which is why the the name of the language app works perfectly in both languages. I know that you guys are very interested in pronunciation and languages in general, and that's why I'm very glad that Babbel could sponsor this video, because whether you want to learn a language to connect with your heritage, I know many of you guys have German heritage, or to invest in your professional growth, or maybe just for future travel plans and self-improvement, Babbel is the best language app to do this with. They use language that is actually used in real life situations and conversations conversations, which is great because traditional textbooks oftentimes teach a rather formal and kind of outdated version of the language. That's what it was like with my French and English books in school growing up. And on Babbel, you can choose from all of these different lessons, like topic related ones about where you're from, for example. This right here is from the German beginner level, or even pronunciation lessons like this one about the German umlauts. Each lesson is only 10 to 15 minutes long, so they're short and fun, and studies have shown that 15 Babbel lessons equal one semester of college Spanish. Now, besides the lessons, you also get access to things like podcasts and games. So it's really a full learning ecosystem with tons of variety depending on how you learn best. And on top of that, you can even book live classes with real certified teachers. Now, Babbel has this amazing offer for you guys. All you have to do is click on the link in the info box below. And when you sign up for six months, you'll get six months for free. And with that, let's dive into my list of 10 German brand names that most people pronounce wrong. And let's find out if you're one of them. Now, last time when I talked about the German discount supermarket Aldi, I briefly also mentioned Lidl, but I didn't go into detail at all. And you guys asked me in the comments how to pronounce it correctly. Most Americans I know say something like little, while the correct German pronunciation is Lidl. It might be a little hard to say, but I think it helps to know that both of the L sounds are light L's that you pronounce with the top of your tongue. So it's Lidl, Lidl instead of Lidl. 
In Germany, they've been around for decades, but in the US, they only opened their first location in 2017. So many of you guys have probably never even seen a Lidl store here. We don't have one here in the Cincinnati area either, but fortunately we have two Aldi locations and I actually do most of my grocery shopping there because the prices are significantly lower than at your normal American grocery store. And I just love the concept of being in and out of there within 20 minutes or less. ID actually has over 2000 stores in the US while Lidl only has around 100 currently. To give you guys a little background information, Lidl is the main competitor of ID and they basically copied the concept of ID, which had been around for about 10 years when Lidl first opened up in 1973. The history of the company goes way back to the 1860s though. The initial store was called Lidl und Zieh Südfrüchtenhandlung and was located in Heilbronn in the state of Baden-Württemberg. In 1930, the local merchant Josef Schwarz joined the company, which was then renamed Lidl und Schwarz KG and it became a wholesale business. After it was completely destroyed in World War II, they rebuilt the business within 10 years and then opened their first discounter retail store in 1968. And from the beginning, they had both their smaller discounter stores with a rather limited selection called Lidl and their bigger full range stores called Kaufland and both of these stores still exist to this day. The next one that many of you guys asked about is a beer brand or a brewery from my hometown Munich and it's spelled like this. I'm assuming the umlaut letters is what throws most of you guys off and I can totally understand that because those are really difficult sounds to make for non-German speakers. So I've heard Americans pronounce this brand many different ways, especially because I've been to Oktoberfest with Americans and this tent by this brewery is actually one of the more popular ones among tourists, so let's phrase it that way. Not necessarily my first choice, but they usually try and say something like, Lowenbrau, 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 something along those lines, which might be kind of hard to understand for German native speakers, especially if it's mentioned out of context. The correct German pronunciation is Löwenbräu. Löwenbräu. The Ö is like making an O sound and then you kind of close your mouth a little like this. O, Ö, O, Ö. <laughs> I feel really dumb doing this. And then the A umlaut U diphthong is pronounced oi, so like O-I in English, like in coin. What's also important to know here is that the German W is pronounced like an English V, so V, and the R is pronounced in the back of your throat, like in French, but if you can do a rolled R like in Spanish, that works too. So then if you put it all together, it's Löwenbräu. Löwenbräu. But if you can even do something like Löwenbräu or something along those lines, German native speakers will probably be able to understand what you're saying and that's really all that matters. Now I also got some requests to explain how other German breweries are pronounced, such as this one or this or this one. And some people also asked how Hefeweizen, which is a type of beer, is pronounced correctly. And I figured since it would be a little much to squeeze all of that into this video, would you guys want me to make a video just about the pronunciation of German beer breweries and beer types and maybe some background knowledge about it too? Let me know in the comments below. But to get back to Löwenbräu, the name was first mentioned in the 1700s, which actually makes it one of the newer traditional Munich breweries. I know it's pretty old for American standards, but a predecessor of the brewery was first mentioned in the 1500s. The next one is actually the world's largest insurance company. It's based in Germany and it's also the namesake of a big soccer arena in Munich. Most Americans call it Allianz, but the correct German pronunciation is Allianz and the Allianz Arena is Allianz Arena in German. Its official name is Allianz SE and it's one of the oldest insurance companies in Germany, founded in the year 1890. It was founded in my hometown Munich, which is also where their headquarters are today, but they actually started the business in Berlin and then expanded quickly to other countries such as England and the US. In the following years, they went public and soon afterwards, they had to pay out huge amounts of insurance money to victims of the San Francisco earthquake in 1906 
1906 and also in 1912 after the sinking of the Titanic. During the Nazi era then they had very close connections to the NSDAP and even to Hitler personally. Their board chair Kurt Schmidt even became the Minister of Economics of the Third Reich in 1933 and he also became an SS honorary member. After 1940 Allianz also ensured a lot of parts of the concentration camps such as armament sites, inmate shacks, material store and vehicle fleets and they also came out to inspect them regularly. They also profited by taking over Jewish insurance houses and their clients whenever they got deported. Today Allianz operates in over 70 countries, has more than 100 million customers worldwide and they also created a permanent exhibition on the internet and in person about their actions during the Nazi era. Now let's get to the brand that you guys mentioned by far the most in the comments. Siemens. Now the reason why I didn't include this in my first video is that to German ears people really don't pronounce this terribly wrong. Now I've gotten so many comments from people saying that non-Germans pronounce this brand name so differently and some people even said that to their ears it sounded like the English word Siemen. Siemens semen. And I mean that might be true but to German ears it's really just a very minor difference. Germans pronounce it with a voiced s which would be a z in English, Siemens, while English speakers pronounce it with a voiceless s, Siemens. In English that's a pretty significant difference and it's usually indicated by using the letter z which makes a z sound or an s which makes a s sound. But in German the letter S can be pronounced both ways and even in one and the same word it's sometimes pronounced differently in different German dialects and accents. People who speak Bavarian dialect for example would say Siemens with a voiceless S just like people do in English. Oh, servus! Du, ich hab gehört, du arbeitest jetzt bei Siemens? So long story short, in comparison to Adidas versus Adidas or Nivea versus Nivea where it might be hard for Germans to even follow what you're trying to say, Siemens versus Siemens to us is tomato tomato. So I personally wouldn't even say that Americans pronounce this one wrong. To give you guys some more information about the company, Siemens is actually the largest industrial manufacturing company in Europe and it's headquartered in Munich just like Allianz is but they also have many branch offices abroad. Their products include trains, motors, compressors and even medical diagnostics equipment and they also use to make telephones we always had Siemens phones at home for our landline, but they don't make those anymore. The company was founded in 1847, so a while back, by Werner von Siemens, an electrical engineer and inventor, and Johann Georg Halske, who was a mechanic. Together they built the first long-distance telegraph line in Europe, which was 500 kilometers long from Berlin to Frankfurt am Main, and since then the company produced a lot of successful and relevant products. Along with Siemens, many people also wanted me to include Bosch in the video and again I didn't include this one in the first video because as a native German speaker I really don't think that Americans pronounce this brand wrong per se. Americans usually say Bosch while Germans say Bosch. So the vowel is pronounced just a little bit differently here. Bosch, Bosch. It's kind of how my friend Josh and I both pronounce his name differently. Depending on whether we speak English or German, we either say Josh in English or Josh in German. By the way, if you haven't checked out my podcast, Understanding Train Station, that I host together with Josh, you definitely should. The link is in the info box or you can just click up here. Now, Bosch is an engineering and technology company headquartered in Gerlingen in the state of Baden-Württemberg and the company was founded in 1886 by Robert Bosch. It started out as a small workshop in the back courtyard, but over the years the company has become a leading automotive supplier. And just like almost all of these old German companies that survived World War II, Bosch was a company that profited from the Nazi regime. They produced armaments in shadow factories that were built in close cooperation with the Nazi authorities and in the last years of the war there wasn't a single new German tank that drove without the Bosch starter elements. The next company has invented a product that probably every single one of you has taken before at some point in your life. It's the pharmaceutical company Bayer and the product I'm talking about is the painkiller aspirin. Now that was the English pronunciation but the correct German pronunciation would actually be Bayer. 
Bayer and the medicine is called Aspirin in German. Aspirin. Bayer is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world and they're headquartered in Leverkusen. Their name is also part of the soccer club Bayer Leverkusen, which is actually a subsidiary of Bayer, so they own it. The company was founded in 1863 and they actually invented aspirin, which is their best known product to this day. Besides that, they also created the first widely used antibiotic, Prontosil, and they also trademarked the name heroin in 1898. And marketed it as a cough suppressant and non-addictive substitute for morphine until 1910. Obviously, that's not what heroin is known as today, and even though bioscientists were not the first ones to make heroin, the company did lead the way in commercializing it. This one you guys definitely know from the condiments or the instant food aisle at the grocery store. Americans pronounce it Knorr, but since it's a German brand, the correct pronunciation is actually Knorr. Knorr. The K is not silent here. Knorr was founded in 1838 by Karl Heinrich Theodor Knorr and is headquartered in Heilbronn, Germany. They mainly produce dehydrated soup and meal mixes, bouillon cubes, condiments, dressings and frozen meals. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Did you recognize it? That was supposed to be the jingle of the German telecommunications company Telekom, or as Americans would say, Telecom. By revenue, they're the largest telecommunications provider in Europe, and they also operate here in the US with one of their subsidiaries, T-Mobile, or as Americans would say, T-Mobile. So let's get this straight. It's a German company, yet they chose an English name for the subsidiary, but even though it's English, it's pronounced differently in Germany and the US. T-Mobile versus T-Mobile. Why, I cannot tell you, but I do know that in the UK, people pretty much pronounce it like we do in Germany. They say T-Mobile. So yeah, that was really weird for me when I first came to the States and I actually got a phone plan at T-Mobile and I was 100% sure that I knew how to pronounce this brand just to find out that for some unknown reasons, Americans tend to pronounce the word mobile as mobile. By the way, T-Mobile US is one of the biggest cell phone providers in the States, next to AT&T and Verizon, and they've been around here since 2001 when Telecom took over the American company Voicestream. Speaking of T-Mobile, T-Mobile, I had to include Playmobil, which is a German line of toys produced by the Brandstetter Group in Zirndorf, Germany. Playmobil was first introduced to the German market in 1974 and they quickly exported and licensed their products internationally. They're a major competitor to Lego toys, Lego in German by the way, which are originally from Denmark. Now just like T-Mobile, they picked an English name for this, Playmobil, but unlike how they did it with T-Mobile, they kept the German pronunciation of it for the American market too. In the US commercials, they call it Playmobil as well, even though in everyday life, I've also heard Americans pronounce it as Playmobil, which sounds very different and somewhat wrong. If you've ever bought a hair dryer or an electric razor in the US, or in any other country really, you've probably come across the brand Braun, which is a German consumer products company founded in 1921 and based in Kronberg im Taunus. They're particularly well known for their industrial product design from the mid 20th century, which included electric razors and record players. Now, I honestly always thought that Americans pronounce this one pretty much like we do in Germany, Braun or Brown with an American accent, which would have made sense because Braun is the German word for the color brown, but when I did some research for this video, it turned out that Americans and British people too actually pronounced this brand brawn or brawn, 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 something along those lines, which sounds really weird to my ears. Fun fact, Braun was actually bought by the American Gillette Company, which was then bought by Procter & Gamble in 2005. So today, Braun actually belongs to Procter & Gamble, which is located in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I am right now. So we've kind of come full circle here. Please let me know in the comments below what other German brands people usually mispronounce for the next part of the series or which German brand names you just generally want to know how to pronounce. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for free 
And make sure to also check out my podcast, Understanding Train Station. You can either watch it here on YouTube or you can listen to it on your favorite audio streaming platform. And of course, if you want to, you can support me on Patreon or buymeacoffee.com. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss.